am distinctly pleased to be a part of this momentous occasion in celebration of the collaboration between UNICEF and the Ministry of Planning and Development on behalf of the Generation Unlimited project in the development of a national manpower plan project. And let me just indicate that you would notice that the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Planning and Development is female. The two Deputy Permanent Secretaries who are here are female. The Director of Socioeconomic Planning is female. And the Minister is female. And I just wanted to assure Mr. Warner that we have no problem with it being called Manpower Planning because we know in the Interpretation Act man includes woman and we know really that the planning is going to be done by the women so we have no problem moments like these must indeed be recognized as the fruits they promise to bear these fruits hold great significance for our future national development and they serve as a model of cooperation between government and our development partners a model which ought to be emulated. As Minister with Responsibility for National Manpower Planning, I am therefore happy that we have arrived at this juncture where a collaboration has been forged to ensure that a 10-year National Manpower Plan can be produced for Trinidad and Tobago. I wish to acknowledge and thank the United Nations for its continuous support, and in particular in this instance, for its support thus far, and in particular, the UNICEF, for its technical and financial support to the Ministry of Planning and Development. I also wish to recognize the importance of the GenU project and its outcomes as they are critical inputs for the future National Manpower Plan, given their focus primarily on addressing future skills needs of the youth. Ladies and gentlemen, Trinidad and Tobago's National Development Strategy, our Vision 2030, identified the importance of the nation's human resource capabilities in realizing the goals of our national vision. Vision 2030 also recommends that an assessment of the manpower needs and skills that are necessary to successfully implement and achieve our national development outcomes must be conducted. The government therefore recognize man recognizes manpower planning as a key tool, a tool that is important for us to accelerate the attainment of our country's overall development agenda. National manpower planning, therefore, has also been highlighted internationally as being necessary for, and I quote, putting the right number of employees, possessing the right type and degree of skills in the right job at the right time performing the right activities to achieve the right objectives, end of quote, from James 1982. Ladies and gentlemen, research undertaken by the Ministry of Planning and Development revealed that there is a sense of urgency to produce such a plan. Given the existence of skills gaps in areas within the local labor market, this has been confirmed by various surveys, such as the World Bank's Enterprise Survey of 2010 and the Ministry of Labor and my Small and Micro Enterprise Development's Vacancy Survey Report of 2012. In the Enterprise Survey, 30% of firms in Trinidad and Tobago stated that an, adequately, that an inadequately educated workforce was a major constraint to business. And I'll go on to indicate that they also stated that when firms were asked to select the most important obstacle to business, an inadequately educated workforce was the most frequently chosen option, 
surpassing crime, theft, and disorder, and also surpassing access to finance. So we see how important manpower planning is. In conducting this preliminary research, staff of the Ministry of Planning and Development also met with several stakeholders within the manpower system, which revealed several challenges. These include insufficient labor market information, inadequate coordination amongst stakeholders and the general absence of a national policy guiding manpower planning. The International Labor Office also conveyed to the Ministry of Planning its views with respect to problems faced by the country's manpower system. These problems include deficiencies in career guidance, insufficient educational ed attainment, out-migration of skilled labor, immigration of labor resources not in demand by employers within the country, misdirected educational attainment, limited and misdirected lifelong learning and on-the-job training. The latter suggests that whilst the OJT program is a valuable intervention for training new graduates, there is still room for improvement in terms of filling the skills gaps needed by employers and in some instances spaces within organizations to match the skills areas of the OJTs. The ILO also highlighted bottlenecks in matching the demand and supply of labor, as well as low labor productivity linked to supply elements as key problems. A national manpower plan would therefore serve to tackle these problems within the manpower system of Trinidad and Tobago. It will serve as a guide to setting priorities in terms of the critical skills needed for targeted areas of development and by extension, the areas in which the demand for skills are needed. The plan will determine future skills needs while also indicating gaps and ways to address these imbalances. It will also ensure that the needs of employers, sectors, and the overall economy are met. In addition, the plan is also intended to address the structure of the manpower system and make recommendations to address any structural issues that affect labor demand and supply within the country. The timeliness of this plan must be underscored and lauded. We are well aware that Trinidad and Tobago now more than ever faces an economic situation of limited financial resources owing to declining energy revenues. This has been exacerbated by debt incurred in implementing necessary COVID-19 recovery measures undertaken by the government. This situation has made it imperative that priorities be established. The Manpower Plan will further help in setting these priorities within the education sector, for example, by providing policy direction to guide educational programs, scholarships, and skills training. I wish also to take this opportunity to highlight the issue of structural unemployment caused by a mismatch between skills that workers in the economy can offer and skills that are in reality in demand and how manpower planning can help minimize this problem. In light of the greater volatility in the business cycle given recent negative effects of COVID-19 on many business models and supply chains, the labor market must be more flexible. In order to keep structural unemployment as low as possible, a manpower plan can help address this mismatch. In addition, and this is critical, consistent 
dedicated manpower planning can assist with monitoring adjustments needed to match supply and demand. The Manpower Plan must also make recommendations for a suitably staffed, dedicated mechanism under the purview of the Ministry of Planning and Development to effectively exec execute this function. Ms. Walter, Dr. Alloy, because I'm not going to try and pronounce the name a second time, <laughs> permanent secretaries. As I stand in solidarity with you, the key stakeholders of the manpower system and of the manpower plan project, I remind you that this is just the beginning and there's much work that lies ahead. I look forward to your input into this project and your full support and that of our business community in facilitating the consultancy that will be procured as a next step and to your working with the Ministry of Planning and Development in developing the plan. The Ministry of Planning and Development intends to use UNICEF's financial contribution of US $100,000 towards the procurement of this consultancy. Once again, I wish to express my heartfelt thanks on behalf of the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and the Ministry of Planning and Development to the UNICEF and to the GENU team for your support to the Ministry of Planning and Development. This ministry also looks forward to working with you and all stakeholders of the manpower system so that this project will be successfully completed and implemented. I thank you for the courtesy of your attention.